I'm recording. Well, hi everybody. This is the uh, the weekly call. This is a non-agenda. I have a couple items that I want to bring up today, and um, people can obviously bring the things they want to do. And actually, maybe I have like three. So the first is I think we're done with the chaos con schedule. So I just put it in the chat. Could you head over and take a look at that? So again, a big thanks to really everybody who helped put this together. I know that Kevin's been working hard on <laughs> kind of kind of getting Markdown and HTML to mix, which <laughs> apparently don't they don't mix very well. Um, if you want to look at it on your phone too, be my guest. I think it renders well on the phone. Yeah, there's a lot of tools that make uh, Markdown and HTML work together just enough to frustrate you. <laughs> I tried for like ten minutes, and I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> forget it." <laughs> so apparently, I think I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I think Kevin has a CSS that's capturing it as it goes into WordPress. Is from what I understand. Diana's picture so is the biggest one in the entire page. Um, look good. I'm sorry, I, I had audio problems. I, I popped in right when I heard my name. Well, it was uh, good job. Good job and thank you. That was, okay. <laughs> that's the really? long and short of it. Uh, were there more formatting issues that were being mentioned or? No, no, no. I, oh. in fact, I think you did a great job. So. Okay. I mean, at this point, we have a few pictures that maybe we'll try to get. I need to get um, the abstract for Yana's keynote. You know what I mean? But I think that I think these are all fine. And I think we can share this with the list just to get the word out. Yeah. OK. I think so. I think we're all good. Oh, can, actually, Zahida's picture is really big. Yeah. Can we fix that really fast? Kevin? Uh, yes. Looking at you. Yeah, I can fix. Uh, yes, I can fix that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> 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 so anyway, that's why we look at these things, I suppose. Um, so if you could fix that and get it more in line with the others, that would be awesome. Thank you. Um, and can you just ping me when you're done? And then I'm just going to put it in the Chaos Weekly and then send it out. Um, just as far as chaos con is concerned, we're all set at this point. Um, name badges are officially approved or whatever they're coming. Um, I've ordered stickers and poker chips that we're going to be handing out as, as like more prizes for people that show up. Um, we have coffee and snacks. It's lunch on your own. I, honestly, I, I think we're pretty good. So unless anybody has something that they can think of that needs to be attended to, all things good. Cool. Okay, I'll make a note. Yeah, just a dumb question. These like the sessions are they fifteen minutes long? I forget. I was like as like as a per person kind of thing. Yeah. Um. Well, what's our total time? Twenty twenty minutes. Hour fifteen minutes per session. Yeah, so you have 20 minutes, Ray. Okay, all right, and then, cool. That makes sense, thanks. Yeah, and honestly, like, there should be quite a few people and quite a few chatty people, mm. I'm guessing, at Chaos, <laughs> Chaos Con, so, right. you know, 10 or 15 minutes would be cool. Um, I'm going to get, I'll pick up, I was thinking today that I'm going to pick up a few, um, just pronoun stickers. I'm sure the LF provides them. And then like those stickers, if you don't want to be have your photo taken or be in a video, that kind of stuff. Yeah, those are good. I think those are good. Um, Sean, did you actually, one thing on the schedule, we can keep it as is right now. See the 1015 slot? Yeah, is that is that the slot that has my name on it that I'm going to yeah, provide? Yeah, so you had mentioned well, that. Yeah, can yeah you I've got I have to talk to my students, two of whom are on the line, about uh, that. Okay. And see 
who would feel ready to give the talk. I don't, I don't think, um, I think really anyone on my team could give the talk and I have a few thoughts in mind that I will, I need to go over with them, but um, we're seldom, uh, we're seldom synchronously together. <laughs> okay. We live and die through Slack, but I will, um, I, it's probably time to have a synchronous team meeting sometime okay. next week. Could you just sort that out and then issue a sort request that out. against yeah. the schedule? Yeah, I will do that. Okay. In fact, I'll Slack message my team right now and uh, ask them what time to work. I will get that out to the list um, a bit later today. And I see Kate's on. So Kate, thanks to the LF, the Linux Foundation, for helping out in all of this. Welcome. Um, okay, cool. Um, I had a few, let's see, um, just updates on Google Summer of Code. We are all set with uh, Payoneer at the Linux Foundation. That's the way that Google Summer of Code allocates funds. So those will be going into the Chaos account. Technically, right now, we have two accounts. <laughs> the Chaos oh, Project has two accounts. What? That's special, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, we have, we have the Community Bridge account, and we have the Google Summer of Code account. And I'm trying to work with um, Fayaz. Is that how you say his name? Okay. And folks kind of in the Community Bridge site to get the money out of the Google Summer of Code, like the Payoneer account, and into Community Bridge. Yep. No, that they should be able to do that after the money is deposited. Okay. I, we have. I just we let it go into the summer. account and then go the afterwards. That's. I basically just want to clear out the Payoneer slash Linux Foundation account and get it all into Community Bridge. Yeah, I, I just don't think that the Google Summer of Code people will put it anywhere other than the Payoneer. So. I totally agree. They would probably not do it, do it to Community Bridge. So. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's all seems to be working out just fine. Right. Um, slowly but surely, and I will say this: I mean, I, I think that the community bridge stuff has been kind of a learning experience for a lot of people. Uh, so. um, for everyone. <laughs> so it's good to kind of work out these kinks. Yeah. Just kind of now, so. Um, good, good notes. Yeah, it's it's been fine. Honestly, it's been fine, and there hasn't been a huge press like a, a huge demand for the money at the moment. So it's, we've had like kind of a, a, some slack time built in over the course of summer. Okay, good. Um, one of the things that people on this call might want to think about moving forward is um, we, we do have funds in Community Bridge to support uh, uh, mentees. You know, like we would be a mentor, kind of like Google Summer of Code, but we can actually use Community Bridge funds. Mm -hmm. Um, and also we have support for travel in Community Bridge. So there are a couple, couple kind of line item areas in Community Bridge, and I think we're gonna have to think a little bit through um, how we think about logistically um, uh, those items. So just kind of keep that on your radar. I wanna keep this as transparent as possible. So, um, okay. Um, linking with, I'm taking notes. All right. Um, are there on the weekly, the chaos weekly, are there, I'm going to send this out to this group. So I just shared a Google doc. With folks, this is where I put together Chaos Weekly. Um, while I have Sean and Elita and Paul on here, and I have Georg on here, it's a it's a it's a confluence of people that are not. You can just there. write your own software updates down on under software regarding Augur regarding Grimoire Lab. Awesome. Matt, is there a weekly deadline that you're wanting this by? I can put that on my calendar then. You probably- Mondays would be great. If you can always send me these updates on Monday. And they can okay. be short. I think the shorter, the better. I think for a while, <laughs> there was a concern that 
the Chaos Weekly newsletter was getting a little large. Um, right. So I think if we could get this down to being read in about a minute, that would be okay. awesome. Okay. All right. So I'll do the update uh, by end of day today for this week and then um, make a point of getting it to, uh, together on Monday. Okay. And if you can even just send me those points, I can get them into this this uh, okay. Chaos Weekly, right. no problem. I'm honestly trying to figure Care out you? what to make them, like to boil down into points. It's super better. simple. Like we're all just doing great. All right. We have a lovely team and we're all just working hard. Um, Gail, uh, one, one thing I just noticed, Matt, is you might yeah. want to have your next evolution work group meeting and the value one to be the next ones rather than last week's. Oh, yeah, I will. I haven't updated oh. the, the dates. Thanks. Okay. Sure, fine. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. Thanks for catching that, though. Um, Georg, was there anything from the Grimoire Lab side of things? You're muted, but if you're talking, <laughs> maybe you're in a noisy place. <laughs> okay, thanks, Gary. All right, cool. Uh, all right, so that was that. And then um, are there updates that people, again, this is a just a weekly call with no real agenda. Are there updates that people want to bring forward with respect to any of their working groups? Um, yeah, I've made some comments on the metrics release candidates uh, okay. issue, issue logs. And um, I'm continuing personally to just go through and ask questions. I haven't looked to see the responses, the questions asked a couple days ago. Um, I think I think for everyone that would be a really great um, activity to make sure that we all do is, is to go through and look at the release candidates. Guess what I have on the agenda for today? Oh, well, I was going to take a look at one. <laughs> There's a lot <laughs> Make of, a comment. <laughs> you made me open so many windows, Matt. I got confused. Because <laughs> okay. I think that would be a great idea too. Sean, are there any are there any updates on risk? I, I think a lot of the working groups right now are just kind of in a holding pattern as we move through these re this release candidate period. Well, this I think I pressure. think um, I talked with Jessica Wilkerson from the Linux Foundation offline. And I think, I think that having some clear definition around some of the risk metrics is helpful for, for her to talk with safety critical folks. Okay. Um, I think, um, as, you, as you know, one of the auger updates is that Matt Snell uh, in Omaha has put together uh, a pretty robust um, uh, edition of, do we call it do socks or is there something else I'm supposed to call it, Matt? No, that's, it's a, that's fine. It's a scanner. And uh, he and I are working closely together this week to make that scanner um, available through an Augur API, which is like we're liter literally like like we have an API in Augur that lets him get all the information he needs to scan all the repos. Okay. An instance of Augur, and from there it's um, he and I just making sure we have a, sh a common shared understanding of what's actually getting stored in the schema. I think. That there's a there's a well designed SPDX schema on, that's behind that scanner, and you know we obviously want to make certain that we're we're clear about <laughs> about what it's telling us okay. before we expose the data to others. We want the, it's a it's a high priority um, for me that when we produce something that it's it's clear what it represents, um, and, okay. and so that's that's where that's at. Cool, um, just. Some clarification for folks. The DoSox is a piece of software that has a license scanner behind it. So there's um, a tool called Phosology, which is a Linux Foundation project, and it has a one of the scanners is called Nomos. And DoSox is basically just um, it's ripped Nomos out of the Phosology tool. Um, <laughs> But it, does. Un, it was always unclear to me which direction the ripping occurred in. Yeah, no, <laughs> that was that way. <laughs> Phosology handles multiple scanners in it, and this is just one of the ones that gets. Nomos is one. Um, I don't know if okay. Nick is still in there, but Monk is still in there. Monk, and then they've added a couple of other ones as well. Okay. The last little bit, so they've been involving it, but I think okay. Nomos is probably the, uh, the best basic to just take from. 
Um, and so then what DoSox does is it takes the results from the NOMO scanner and stores it into an SPDX format is, is really what it does. Um, and so anyway. Just um, is the DoSox, should I be pointing to the DoSox off of the SPDX page then again now? Yeah, so we're starting to give it, starting, it's starting to get love again. It has yeah. a, I, I think we're working pretty well. I think we're working off of Matt Snell's branch right now for the most part, though, aren't we, Matt? Yeah, I've got a fork that's updated to like Python 3 and got a few more features added. Okay, can you post it up on either the DoSox public or into the SPDX repo? Sure. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think for the time being, it would be most helpful to have, have us point a public link at Matt's fork. Surely at some point we'll make a pull request, but I think, I think, um, and maybe Matt is, I think Matt's already made some pull requests, but the most actively be developed. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, you know, I, I just, if it's up on a neutral site, it tends to inspire more confidence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm basically writing up a tooling document this month and so yeah. make sure I get all the tools. One of the things, one of the things, and we don't have to get into this level of detail, but one thing we could possibly do is uh, create a branch off of the current DoSox master that's in that more publicly recognizable version that it is labeled Python 2. And okay. then, you know, call that Python 2 master and have the master branch be the work that Matt's doing in that's Python 3. And, yep. and then, then we can be doing those pull requests in the master much more frequently. Um, without having to reverse engineer the old Python two piece. And <laughs> no, that, that makes complete sense to me, Matt. Yeah. That works that for me or Matt Snell. No, I was talking, Matt, Peter Christ, since, since you're, you're the repo owner, I believe. Yeah, no, it totally, totally makes yeah. sense. Yeah, okay. so Matt, yeah, Matt Snell, I think that's, that's a good thing to do then. If, if I, it sounds like we've got good agreement on that. Okay, cool. Um, anything else from risk? Let's hope uh, we're meeting at our, our, our next meeting is on Monday uh, at 1 p.m. Uh, Central Daylight Time. So uh -huh. it would be great to have uh, some members of the community who have interest in licensing and testing um, on that call because that's that's a bit of where we're focused right now. I'm also I haven't done this yet other than some emails a week or so ago, but um, David Wheeler at some point and the risk group are going to have another conversation because we want to ensure that the work that risk is doing supports the badging program and, uh, and doesn't undermine it. And I think there are ways that we could develop metrics that would, we want to develop metrics that both are helpful to consumers of cast metrics and also helpful to the badging program. There's a, a set of, um, joint interests that you know, we produce okay. metrics on some microcosm of the badging program that we might, we, might, we don't want to have uh, unintended side effects that cause any harm to what David's doing. Oh, okay. I'll ask, I'll, I'll, I'm back in town now and I'll be on the call next Monday and I'll ask for more details then. Okay. I yeah. It's, it's not super complicated. Like if you look at the 200 and some fields that are in there, yeah. I think some of those are going to boil down to sort of what I'd call badging submetrics. And I think how we do that's material to um, the metrics being useful and supporting the badging program without confusing people about it. Okay. Okay. I'll get a breakdown from you and Jessica about that. I'll, 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 what you guys want. <laughs> I'll write up the breakdown and, and work together there we go. <laughs> David before then. There we go. We'll get David on in the discussion too. Sounds good. Uh, the other thing that's just um, for general interest, and I'll see if I can get links for people later, is when I was in um, Shanghai two weeks ago. Um, Ali, uh, one of the engineers from Alibaba basically presented on some of the metrics and analysis work he was doing about the GitHub repos and how popular or not popular they are and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I'll see if I can find the links to um, his mm -hmm. presentation, if it's up posted yet or not, and if not, I'll reach out to him. And what, what was, he was doing what? was basically analyzing the top 20 projects. What? What was the, where, why were you in Shanghai? Was there a conference? 
yeah, the, the Open Source Summit China happened um, in Shanghai. Okay. And so I was talking a bit about safety and security as well as Zephyr. Okay. Uh, I was over for that, but um, when I saw this metrics talk, I obviously perked up and trottled off to it and sat in on it and was looking at the analysis he was doing. Um, and so I told him, I wasn't able to talk to him at the end because I had to go and present my own talk. Um, okay. And the conversation went longer, but I've been in touch with him by email. And he's actually about to start his PhD at a university over there. And is interested in probably pulling into coming into the chaos okay. all the time. So I'll be trying to. Well, you want to? You can loop me in on that. And I'm just gonna. Well, you can loop me in on that, and I'm happy to talk to him about the project. Sure, we'll do. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, let's see. As far as um, D and I goes. I was on the call yesterday, so I guess um, first, thank you, Kate, for the introduction to Shaw. Is that how you say Shua. her name? Shua. Okay, Shua. Um, so Shua is uh, leading the DNI efforts at the Linux Foundation, um, and we're trying to make a connection. And we're actually going to be meeting a little bit later this week, and I'm going to give her a heads up, just kind of like structurally as to what the Chaos Project is about. Um, and she'll be joining the DNI calls kind of moving forward. Next week, there isn't a DNI call because I think a lot of the folks are going to be in uh, OSCON in Portland. Um, so, but anyway, thank you very much for that introduction, Kate. I think one of the things that uh, came, there are a number of things that came from the talk yesterday, um, but one is the hope of, of working with kind of growing the base of, of projects in communities that the DNI working group works with. Uh, and maybe Shua can help in that regard. I so. think she could be mostly focusing on the curve, but we'll, like I said, we'll see. <laughs> it's evolving on our side too. I'll okay. Be, uh, we'll... But I think it's just, I think the part of the conversation yesterday was trying to, you know, connect with, with projects as has been done, um, but to continue to connect with projects to, we think through um, how the work in the DNI working group can help inform the way that these projects think about DNI uh, and how some of the metrics can be put into practice. Um, so in my crazy travels of June, one of the other things I was doing was I participated in a software development diversity workshop at Google. Uh -huh. And um, there's the notion, um, there's a lot of diff really good breakout sessions and some lot of really good, you know, discussions on different levels of diversity. Um, but one of the things that was a highlight that might be worth reaching out to is some of the researchers are going to start to form diversity chairs at academic conferences. And so they've got an initial one targeted and they were coming up with a lot of metrics for events. Okay. For events, which relates very much to what the Linux Foundation's checklist is like already. Um, and so, um, possibly I can put you in touch um, with um, them and see about them sort of looking at reviewing the event side of the diversity metrics as well as potent and so I'm thinking that might be a useful tie. Yeah, any, um, any ways that we can dovetail efforts. Oh, yeah, especially because, they, you know, like I say, there are a lot of academics, and they came up on their own in one of the breakout sessions with a lot of things okay. that we had already got in the Linux Foundation's list of things that we do for diversity, and they came up with one or two more. Okay. <laughs> so I passed that on to Angela, and I can pass that on to you guys. Yeah. Um, uh, I also great. pulled together a presentation and made some of the chaos stuff visible. Okay, but, thank you. Where was this? Where were you? Um, it was at Google. Google was hosting a okay. uh, diversity and inclusion workshop um, at the start of June. It was an invitation only at the event. So, okay. it, uh, but it, there was a lot of people I'd met the prior week at um, ICSI in Montreal. Mm -hmm. so it was a lot of the same sort of overlaps of communities. And there's a lot of good 
discussions at the ICSI event as well, which I think Sean was at, obviously, for part of it. That would be great. I mean, any, any connection in that regard. I, okay. I really hate duplicating efforts. Yeah, just a second. Um, okay. If people want, I can share the presentation I put together for them as well. Just put it in the chat and I'll put it in the minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else from DNI? I see Don's on, but I assume that's Don. It is. It is me. I do have one more thing. Um, so there's a community manager meetup the day before OSCON. So this coming Sunday. And we did get um, Nicole's talk in there. So there will be a, kind of a DNI talk focused on DNI metrics. I'm not sure exactly what she's going to talk about, but it looks like she has some time on the agenda to do that. So that'll be good. When is that? That's this Sunday. Sunday. Okay. And it's in Portland the day before OSCON. So oh, if any oh. of you are going to be at OSCON and you're going to be there on Sunday. Okay. Join us. Thank you. Um, any other, let's see, I don't see value on here. I can tell you right now from a value perspective, we're working at um, kind of clearing up the candidate metrics. Um, we had a working session two weeks ago or whatever, a week and a half ago. Um, and we'll, that took care of like two of them. And there's two more to take care of and we'll be doing that this Friday. So just kind of clearing up those candidate metrics within value. Um, evolution, Sean, did you have anything in that regard? Um, I've, I missed both. I think I missed the last two value meetings and the okay. last um, evolution meeting with um, different travel and other commitments that I've had. So I don't have an update for evolution today. Okay. Anyone that's been on that call recently? I, I, I was. I mean, last week it was really just spent, most of the time was spent clearing out issues and pull requests, honestly. Yeah. Then that's, that's kind of off in the agenda. So and yeah, pretty it's, well asynchronously, I think. Yep, no, I agree. It was just kind of clearing those out. Um, and then, Don, did you have anything from community? Or wait, Common? Uh, no, just a plug that we're meeting on Thursday. Okay. And we're continuing to work through some of the other metrics that didn't make it into this release but that we're hoping to get done for the next one. Okay. So things like ge geography, time to response, that sort of thing. Um, one of the things that I've been kind of asking the working groups to think about is our release timing. So obviously you know that version one is set for Open Source Summit North America in San Diego, and honestly it appears to be totally on target for that. Um, so with the upcoming year, and this does not have to be decided today, but with the upcoming year, are we looking at doing metrics releases twice a year? Um, so I think the most likely candidate for doing a, like a 1.5 release would be with FOSDEM and ChaosCon that occurs in Europe in February, I think is when that is. So getting on a six month cadence? Um, I, I think a six month cadence is certainly better than annual. I, I personally would prefer it if we uh, sort of, event. maybe we, I would like to see a more, more frequent cadence of release, especially since some of the working groups have a small number of um, metrics available right now, but maybe we wanna go I think we could say for sure, let's set a six month target, but maybe after we go through the full evaluation process and see how that goes, we can, we can try to release more metrics like uh, more frequently. So, okay. um, you know, uh, as I think about it, I think the current schedule has us doing a metrics formal release post evaluation sometime in August prior to 
to North, uh, Open Source Summit North America. Maybe we could target the end of September for the next draft release. I don't know what kind of cadence that puts us on. It'd be pretty quick. Um, are we are we I always going to have? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I found that. I mean, I, the 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 presence of a deadline seemed to motivate a good deal of active development, which but, is in my experience. Yeah, deadlines seem to do that for everything <laughs> um, all the time. But, but you know, <laughs> I, I mean, I so I, I guess I, I guess I maybe six months is not aggressive enough. Maybe that ends up being about right for the bandwidth we all have. Um, maybe we don't decide right away. I just wanted to throw that thought into the into the ring. Are we are we always going to have that thirty day comment period prior I to the release? So. I like it. It I gives think, me a I chance to go through and edit. Yeah, I think so it's because important because once once we start adding things like that, it it really does get us get us closer to that six month period. Yeah, logistically speaking, when when you talk about the you know working on the metrics and then the release process and then that thirty day comment period. Uh, six months may not seem that aggressive, but but those things really do kind of narrow the narrow the windows. Yeah, I like I like that window a lot, and I think that's a good point. Um, I, I do know that we should be a little faster with releases. I think a lot of time in release version one was spent just getting the workflow down. Yeah. I, I completely agree. And now that we've learned all of that, we don't have to spend as much time on that process. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, so I think sometime in September, early October is not completely outrageous because we'll be five to seven weeks removed from Open Source Summit North America. Yep. Um, and then we'll sort of fill in the 30 day review period stuff and figure out where that, that lands us. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to put it in the notes open discussion. Just keep that on the back of your mind. So um, we hit all the working groups, risk, DNI, value, evolution, common. Um, did any of the, Sean, did you have any Augur updates or Georg have any Grimoire Lab updates? I seem like Georg is silent. So um, you wanted to share with folks at all? We can, we continue to um, add GitHub API endpoints, and we continue to add um, mailing list information. And um, there's a there's a whole bunch of new um, metrics available in Augur. And I think some of what we're going to be starting to do is to create what we're calling um, aggregated or that may not be that would be a collection of chaos metrics that that to create the kinds of dashboards that are not agnostic that they want to, okay. but we would not, we would not be the one defining values. It would be organizations assigning the, the value. So the chaos metric stays agnostic, but uh, uh, an aggregated auger metric may have, ha will have the explicit intent intention of integrating a set of chaos metrics um, that can be parameterized by an organization and used to make a judgment and be not agnostic. So it's, uh, I think it, we're working towards enabling the not agnosticism that I think a lot of organizations want. All right. Cool. Um, I just got a note, or well, actually we all got a note from Georg Grimoire uh, Level, a new release yesterday. Uh, 0.2.26, so you can check that out. All right, um, anything else from folks? All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording, but <laughs> you can leave if you want. But <laughs> second, but um, I'd really I'd, I'd love for all of us to take a just honestly, it takes like a minute to go take a look at the, one of the candidate metrics and provide any feedback that you might have. So I'll put the link in there again. So here's the link for folks. Oops. There you go. So these are the these are the release candidate metrics. 
And I know that a number of you have been through some of these metrics again, so I'm going to stop. I'm stopping the recording. Um,